I'm not sure that I've been very clear in explaining my position uh, concerning the issue of antinatalism. I want to make it very clear now. I'm not, uh, as a philosophical position, opposed to antinatalism. Uh, I see it as an opinion, as I've said before, but I don't see it as an opinion that is particularly dangerous or dangerous at all. Um, don't have kids if you don't want to have kids. Who am I to tell people not to uh, remain child-free? Uh, I see the issue as more or less the same way as I see the abortion debate. It's, a, it's an insoluble issue, but each side must learn to accommodate the other. Um, I will argue the antinatalist position, i.e. the morbid position, I will argue against it, or I will argue with it, I suppose, is more uh, accurate. Um, I'll attack the props, I'll attack the underlying thinking, um, that sort of thing. But in the end, that's really more of a, a fascinating philosophical debate. But if someone wants to be an antinatalist, I have absolutely no problem with that. Don't have children, that's fine. And at the end of the day, if that's all antinatalism is, well, that's great. What I do have a problem with is the idea that reality has been discovered and anyone who disagrees is simply wrong. To me, that is a potentially dangerous point of view. Um, the discourse always uh, hinges on the idea of imposition. Who are you to impose upon someone else? I agree. Who am I to impose my views on somebody else? That goes for everything. If I am an antinatalist, I don't have children. If I am a pro-natalist, whatever on earth that's supposed to mean, I presumably either I have kids or I encourage other people to breed. But the imposition bit is where I draw the line. <clears throat> and as I say, this is insoluble. Each side is afraid that the other side is going to impose something. Each side is convinced that the other one is imposing something on the other one. Uh, the antinatalist would say, or the morbid antinatalist, or ephilist, or whatever, uh, says that you're imposing life on someone else that you have no right to do. I understand that argument, and while I don't agree with it at the end of the day, I see where people are coming from when they make that argument. By the same token, there are antinatalists out there who would like to, as I see it, impose upon um, people who want to have children. They would like to stop people from having children because they have discovered that the world is not worth having children in or for whatever formula they've come up with. Um, the thinking has become, it is now unethical to have children, therefore, all that I'm doing is I'm doing the same thing as societies have always done in opposing uh, natalling, I guess. Um, I am simply actively opposing um, the violation of someone else's rights, i.e., in this case, the right not to exist, not to be, not to have existence imposed upon me. This is an insoluble problem. <laughs> this is a problem that the best we can do is take sides on. Now, I don't think from the pro-natalist side we're going to get many people fanning out into neighborhoods forcing people to have kids. Something akin to that kind of thing took place here in Canada, in uh, uh, French Canada. It was called La Revanche des Berceaux, the uh, Revenge of the Cradles, where the Catholic Church threatened families with eternal damnation if they didn't churn out babies by the dozen. Um, that 
is a bad idea. That is morally wrong. Um, and by the same token, making laws where um, people are interfered with in their desire to have children to procreate is morally pro problematic for me as well and is wrong simply because each side has said I know what reality is anyone who disagrees with me is simply wrong anyone who doesn't share my worldview is wrong and possibly mentally defective and that gives me now the right and perhaps the obligation to correct these defective people most antinatalists that I've spoken to, even the loud-mouthed ones and the loud-lunged ones and the angry ones and the bitter ones and the morbid ones, don't believe anything of that nature. I've come across a few, but I've come across a few people uh, on the internet, uh, such as what was that American um, guy from Illinois who said that nataling is a gift from God, and even if you're raped, whatever, you should give birth, etc. Same idea, the same kind of insanity. Extremism is the enemy of um, of a free society, of democracy, whatever you want to call it. It's the enemy of harmony. Now, it's also um, ultimately the enemy of um, our ability to even come up with ideas like antinatalism. If you have extremism as an inherent thing in society, what you either get is you get Hobbesian chaos or you get dictatorship. You get one side imposing its point of view on the other ruthlessly, not just by default here, I'm talking ruthlessly enforcing its will on other people. In other words, um, the pro-natalist imposition, which I said took place in Canada, was um, threatening people with eternal damnation if they don't have large families. That is coercion of the purest and, I would say, the wickedest kind. You've got power over people's minds, and you are coercing them. You are motivating these people by fear. That's coercion. Um, the antinatalist sort of coercion is the ephilist or morbid antinatalist or red button set who I would say has decided that existence is horrible and uh, it's, if necessary, the right thing to do to actively prevent nataling even if that involves coercion. We live in an imperfect world perfection is not going to happen regardless of what ideology or ism you subscribe to. The second we forget that, we reach for our hand grenades. Thank you.